Hi everyone, welcome to another tutorial session on RNA seq data analysis. So, in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Galaxy platform to generate the read counts using feature counts. So, this tutorial is a continuation of the earlier one on mapping, and so I will encourage you to watch that video if you want to um, learn or if you want to follow this tutorial. So, we are basically using the output from that tutorial here. So just make sure to that to also get the files here. All right, so let's get to the Galaxy tutorial page, the one which has the instructions for feature counts. So uh, let's just check. So this is the page, and I'll leave the link to this page in the description box. And by the way, I've already covered the command line version of this tool. So if you're interested, check the description box, you'll find a link to that video. So that is it. So scroll down, and then let's get to the counting per reads genes. So let's just get there. All right. So we are going to use feature counts. Now, let me also say that if you want to use feature count, there's something you need to add. You need to also add the strandedness of the data. And that is something that you have to also follow here. Let's just check. Um, let's get to this side here to see. It's something that you have to check here. So you have to follow um, the instructions here. I'm trying to get it for you before we proceed. Let's check here. It's yeah. So this section here, estimation of strandedness. So uh, you have to follow the instructions. You can still read the notes here, which will be helpful. But follow the instructions here. Also estimate the strandedness. But for this tutorial, I'll skip it because the strandedness is already known. It has been given in this tutorial. So I'll just move straight to the feature count activity. But I am going to cover another tutorial on the strandedness as well. So uh, stay tuned if you want to learn how to estimate the strandedness. But um, I'll skip it again. I will say that I'll skip it because we know the strandedness of the data we are dealing with. So let's scroll down to the feature count section. It is somewhere here. Let's check. Yeah. So counting risk page. And so we have our feature count here. So we have the instructions here. And so we are going to follow the instructions to count the read per genes. That's what we are going to do here. So let's continue. Let's get back to the Galaxy platform here. And again, I'm going to say that try to generate this data by watching the tutorial on map. All right, so try to do that and generate the data. So we are using the BAM file here. I think it's somewhere here. Yeah, this one. So this is what we are going to um, use. Yeah, okay. So let's proceed. So let's call feature counts. Feature counts here. Let's type it. Yeah, so we have it. So it says feature counts. So we click it. And then after clicking, you will have this information coming up. So it says alignment file. So alignment file is for me the file or let's say data number 23, which is here. I showed it earlier on. So that is my alignment file. So it's selected. So if you're using your own data, make sure to select the one that um, shows your data and then use it. And then for strandedness, we have specified strand information. So we are using on stranded because it has already been determined. We have that here. It's somewhere here. Yeah. So if you don't know the strandness, just follow the tutorial I showed, the instructions I showed above, and then estimate the strandedness. Okay, so it's unstranded. And then what about the other option? It says gene annotation file. So we are using the GTF, which I also have imported. So I'll just click. And then I'll select this one GFF slash GTF file in your history. So click it. And then after clicking it, you'll be given another session where you select your GTF file. So mine is here. It has been selected for me. But if you don't see it, just make sure to click and select it. All right. So that is what you need to do. And then there are other options we need to also select. It says GFF feature type filter as on GFF gene identifier gene ID. I think those ones are here. As on gene ID, we have it there. 
and then we also have to do this is output format gen id read count multi qc this is blah blah blah, blah. multi qc the sick edge are lima boom compatible so we need to select that so for that one it's here output format so for me it's already selected but if you don't see it just click and select that one and then make sure it appears and then there's another option it says create gen length file it says yes so that one is here so we have to select yes and then what else do we need it says does the input have read pairs yes and count them as one single fragment so that one is somewhere here yeah this question here so does the input have read pairs so click and select yes paired and count them as one single fragment so that is selected and then what else do we need it says in read filtering options minimum mapping quality per read is 10. so for that one too we have to scroll down a bit to the read filtering option so click it and the minimum mapping quality is 10. like this so i think that is all let's check again yeah so basically that is all that we need to select when it comes to the feature count so here we will run the tool so let's run the tool all right, so we are running feature counts now. So we will just wait for feature count to complete its work. Okay, feature count has completed its work. So let's take a look at what we are supposed to do next. So let's go back to the tutorial page. Right, so what we are supposed to do next is to aggregate the report for feature count. So we are going to use multi QC. So let's do that now. We have one sample, so what we are going to generate is for a single sample. So let's run multi QC. So we'll call it, so I'll set for it. Okay, so I have it here. So I'll click it and then I'll select the outputs. All right, so first of all, we need to select the two that for us to generate the logs so it's feature count so we have to get it and select it and then when we come here we are supposed to use the summary file let's just check here first so we are supposed to use a summary file so that is here that is this one here so that's what we have to select all right so i think that's the only thing we need to so once we do that we have to click so let's click the run tool to run multi QC okay multi QC has completed its work so we are going to look at the reports so we will use that to compare the answers for the questions here so let's download so I'll download the web page so I'll just click here and then I'll just download it yeah, so this is going to be feature counts. So I'll just label it as it is. Okay, so I have it done. So I'll just check the output, which is here, and then I will extract the web page. So it's on data 35, that's what I have here. So I'll just check here. So I'll just click it. And then I'll open it. So I have my feature counts reports here. Now let's take a look at the question. It says, How many reads have been assigned to a gen? So, how do we find that? We use the color scheme here to help us. And when we hover our mouse also on this, the plots, you'll see it. So, so I say assigned 63.1%. That is what has been given here. Okay, so around 3% of the reads have been assigned to gens. That's for our sample. All right, that's what we have around 63 percent and then it says this quantity is good enough so uh, the guys to our page makes us know that if you have this value 63 percent of the reads have been assigned to a gene then that means it's a good enough value for us to um, proceed okay now let's go and there's also an important point that has been raised here. It says some reads are not assigned because they were multi-mapped. Others were assigned to no features or to ambiguous ones. 
okay so those ones were not assigned so if you take a look at our mapping statistics we see that here so there's the star mapping statistics um, again if you have not watched this video make sure to watch it and then generate this output so we have uniquely mapped map to multiple loci etc so it is these ones that um i've been made mention of that let's just check here i've been made mention of that because they are multi-mapped and others were assigned to no features or stuff so these reads are not assigned all right so that's what is being referred to here so um just take note of that basically and this is where the statistics come in handy because if you have a statistics it becomes easier for you to um, examine the outputs and then you can decide if the results is good enough um, to proceed with the dance analysis or not all right now let's look at question number two it says when should we be worried about the assignment rate should what should we do so it says if the percentage is below 50 percent then we should investigate where the rates are mapping inside genes or not and this is where igv comes in so with igv you can visualize the alignment records and then that will help you and you should also check that the annotation corresponds to the correct reference genome version all right so this is also important so with the mapping for example we use the first a and we also use the gtf so you should make sure they have the same version and also with the feature count we use the gtf and so you should make sure that the gtf you are using is the same as what to use for the mapping so sometimes you must you must check the data and make sure that they are of the same version so those are things you have to check all right so uh, these are the points that the Galaxy to wrap page raises for us so that uh, we can get um, results that are good enough for us to proceed with the dance analysis. All right. Now, with feature count, what is generated is a table with the counts. All right. So you have the count for agent. That is the main output. We also have the summary file generated, and we also have a feature length file generated. All right, so we have three outputs now, but the main one is the counts table. The description of the outputs are here. But anyway, let's just take a look at the output ourselves. I think it will be better if you can open them with our own PC. So on the Galaxy platform, you will see three outputs. All right, we will start with the first one, the counts one, which is the main output. So I'll click and I will save it. So this is it, I'll just open it. Now the output here, you can open it with a spreadsheet software. So that's what I'll do now. So I'll just open mine now. Okay, so this is the count file. So you have the gen and then the counts. Take note that we are dealing with a single sample. So we have this here, all right. So if you have multiple samples, then you can have the output for each sample in a separate file, like this one here. Let's just check the Galaxy platform. So when you are here, scroll down a bit and you find the count files here. So we have some here. These are the download links. So you can just check them out. So that is for the count file. Now let's take a look at the summary file this is what multiqc used to generate the plots i'll also save it and then i'll view using my spreadsheet software so this should be quick so this is the summary file and we also have the length file which is here i'll also save that And then I'll open with my spreadsheet software. So this is the land file. All right. Now I will start with the counts file. So with the count file, if you're using the command line version, all right, you will get something like this. I mean, the command line version of feature counts, you get something like this. All right. So here you'll find your gen ID, you'll find the length, you also find the read counts. If you have multiple samples, then it's possible to put all of them in a single file like this when using the command line version. And then you can extract those you want for your 
downstream analysis. All right. And then we also have the length also indicated here. So with the command line version, you, you don't need to separate the length from the read count. Everything is done for use in a single file. So you can use the bash scripts or bash commands to extract the needed information or you write a Python or R script to do that. That's up to you. So take note of that. So the length file, that is gen ID and length. Let's just open this one. The length information in this format is required when we are going to perform analysis such as gene ontology. So if you're going to use tools like GoSeq for gene ontology analysis, then you will need to supply it with this information. I have a tutorial on that, so check the description box and you find a link to that video. So that video shows how to use GoSeq to perform gene ontology analysis and then it also shows how to supply this information to GoSeq. All right, so that's how we do it. And the summary file is placed in a separate file. Okay, so that is it for the command line version. And I've already covered a tutorial on that. I mean, the command line version of feature counts, I have a tutorial on that. So if you're interested, you can just check the discussion box. The link to that video is there. Now, after generating your accounts, your account data, let's just go back to the Galaxy tutorial page. After generating your accounts, what you can do is to perform differential gene expression analysis and that's is here this section here now for you to cover this tutorial by the way so with the differential expression analysis you can use tools like hr disc 2 etc but this tutorial use disc 2 and i've covered the tutorial on that so with the tutorial i have the command line version and the galaxy version so you can choose whichever you want okay so check the discussion box you'll find the links to those videos or you can also check the videos that have been shown right now